Howdy y'all, this is Red Wolf. I got two comments on my light versus heavy machete video, at least time of recording this. One asking about the, um, what I believe is the Ozark Trail machete from Walmart. The other was asking about Fiskars. I could not find a 22 inch in town. I did find what I believe is the 18. Tempered lifetime. Full lifetime warranty. Didn't know about that. But I got this, and I kept everything in the packaging because I want you to know I hadn't played with anything. I just got this just fresh. I'm gonna tear into it real quick if I'm lucky. A weird little plug at the end. That's a machete. Ah, this thing going everywhere. Here's a how to machete paper, apparently. Yeah, it's got a lanyard. but no sheath or anything. So right now, dollar for dollar, I was asked, cause this is a fairly lightweight, get some comparatives in a minute. Um, I was asked to compare it to the Trey Montina, which I will. Price range, this is in the price range of the Ontario. And I am, I won't be a harsh judge on that. So features, 18 inch blade, little bitty finger chole. It's got a real, Thick grip on the end right here. Lanyard hole. It's got some proper slider stuff in there, so that's pretty good. Got a really aggressive saw with proper offset teeth. Ontario has a saw back. Ontario has a saw back machete, but it's got the more offset striations compared to a more of a wood saw kind of a thing. So that'll be interesting to kind of check that out. Um, so I don't go at everything, everything, everything twice. Um, check out my light versus heavy machete video. I've got a Trey Montina machete. I've got an Ontario. Do a little bit of talking. But uh, let me get everything repositioned and we'll start whacking into some stuff. This is the 18 inch Trey Montina. I think I had the 24 inch or 22 inch. Here's 24 inch Trey Montina last time. This will be the one I'll be using today. Versus the Fiskars, same size. More or less. Really different handle designs. Like drastically different. So, Fiskars out of the box. It seems really sharp, it has a good grind. And a sec the secondary little cutting bit right there is really nice, and it's pretty well balanced. It's, it's it's a it's not as far forward as this one. I'll do a test on that in a minute. But anyway, I got some vines and stuff back here. I'm gonna see what all they do and how well I can do on it. Gonna be getting a little lean on it today to make sure everything's in camera. A little bit of jump. cutting pretty good so far I don't have any real strong opinions on Fiskars yeah. I've had one in the past not long after they started selling them here in my area and I think I had the bigger one it was okay but I don't think dollar for dollar that I liked it very much and I'm not, I'm not super in love with the grip. It's rubberized. It's just, it's, it's really fat. I mean, like, it's, it's really fat. You know, that's, that's the full, full grip right there. I mean, it's sharp. No hand shock so far, which is something. One of those vines right there. Let me get repositioned a little bit. And I got this in some of the same places right there. Got anything in my beard? Always got something in my beard. Come on. Okay. You can see that, but you can't see me seeing that. So, once again, we've got a little palmettas down here. I mean, it's sharp. Oh, on the camera. 
I mean, it's real sharp. It's taking real clean cuts. Ain't no kind of, ain't no kind of damage on there. That's pretty nice. We'll see. Man, this camera driving me up a wall, y'all. All right, so bigger test. I'll get back in the frame. Okay, I'm about to move over here. I got more of the log in frame. I'm just going to go through. I got all three of these. I'll just show you a quick down, down, down. On. Oh. All right. Y'all can see my pair of shoes again. Yes, sir. All right. That's one. That's two. That's that big boy. Don't want to pop in there. Yeah. It's that Ontario got that thicker grind to it. Now, I'm gonna say we got that much of the Trey Montina and that much. Yeah, that's about the same amount of uh, about the same amount of travel into there. That's pretty good. Man, that hits hard. I really don't know if the sound comes through on video. If you can really tell the difference. And at least right here, it's real hard to see. But my fine edge is gone off this Fiskars. It hadn't rolled or chipped anything, but the fine edge is definitely flattened. I'll show you that one a little bit right fast. I mean, I don't know how well it comes through on camera. I'm trying to get y'all a good thing. But I mean, we're talking massive depth difference in there. And to my eye, a lot less damage. I mean, a lot less damage. I'll get something small in a minute. And for argument's sake, here's my Ontario. And that's already deeper than either one of those cuts. Mean girl, I need a. This one's carried a small amount and used almost none. This is a factory edge on here. I might need to save that one for doing a little bit more of this kind of stuff. Let me uh, once again reposition, and I'll uh, I'll do some of the stuff with the limbing. All right, so reposition. But to be clear on my thoughts so far, and uh, get the prices worked out here. You can get two Trey Montinas like this, one Trey Montina with the sheath and a Coke, a Fiskars with no sheath, or an Ontario with no sheath. So that's sort of where the bang for your buck line is right now. This still has a saw though, and I'm gonna mess with that in a minute. I am getting a little Feels like I'm getting a little bit of a wobble in here though. So this is not exactly the greenest wood. Some of that stuff we cut uh, a week or so ago. But I'm just gonna bring it out here and try it out. See how well it works. I said this is a lot of what I do. With these when I'm doing stuff Just hold it out do these little lemming type feels that's okay this is a uh, I mean it's not doing bad I mean this is these are some 
really clean cuts and stuff where it's getting them. Oh, I mean, same stick, same token. Quite a clear shot at that one, do I? That's clear. There we go. That's hitting about where I wanted it to. This is that same one that we cut off with the Fiskers. Whoop. Just pretty smooth, clean little cut. That's pretty thick for holding out. I'm sure if we set these on the log and anvil chop them it would go up a pretty good way i'm gonna uh i'll turn it back around where i can zoom in a little bit easier on it and test out the saws i think i got a pretty good yeah got a pretty good spot in there so let's start i'm gonna go small and then i'll go big because sometimes it does make a difference Put that in right there so I have something to lever against. Come on. I need to find something green. Oh. Test that on. I don't know if I can. Get it up over there or not. Lord, before I get that all the way through, I just want to make a point. Well, but that would be really easy to chop through normally. Same stick, same time. Here's the Ontario with the less nice teeth. That definitely ain't the same degree right there. Now what I've been told in the past is that this kind of style, which comes off their uh, Air Force survival knife, is supposed to help tear through uh, like the siding on like an old Huey chopper or something like that. It ain't much of a saw. It's better than nothing. I'll tell you what it's really good at. No. Oh. Yes, yeah, as a self-defense option. Not necessarily as a sword catcher, but it does give you a little bit of stick on there, a little bit of texture, a little bit here. As a saw, it ain't much, but. You can't say I didn't give you a fair test on it. I will say that this just bust through this. Lord, that went all the way through. There we go. The way the grip's made right here with that swelling palm. You don't get the the flick to it and that little bit of extra flick or stuff like this really makes a difference no hand shock but no real easy i don't know how much that matters to everybody and oh, once again this is what i seem to remember a lot of people might not consider this much, but I hadn't done a lot with it. But there is a little bit of edge uh, deformation right there. Oh, Lord, my camera falling over. No wonder it's all weird. All right. So, uh, all right. So, some final thoughts on this. 
I'm not in love with it. I uh, could probably make do with it. But knowing what I do, I would probably be pissed off the entire time. I uh, That worries me. It looks like it's got two pins, at least with this model, holding it in the handle. And I can see that one right there wiggling a little bit. It may be secure, but it's not stable. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't think it's going to cause any major issues. And I think for what most people expect for a $20, $30 machete or farm tool, they're going to go out and dog this and not have a problem with it. For a one tool option, bang for your buck kind of a thing, I I would probably buy a Trey Montina or two. I just, the edge holding potential is, or the edge holding capability seems to be a little bit better here. It's cheaper. I think it cuts better. And I don't know how much more there really is. I really don't know how much more there is to say on it. I don't think there's any real advantages. Um, I mean, you could probably buy this and then buy a cheap uh, folding saw. I don't think you quite get a Baco anymore, but you can get you a Corona or something like that from the store where you would normally get a Fiskars and get you a decent um, bushcraft pruning. I mean, you probably get a buck saw somewhere close to that range. Not against Fiskars again. They're all right. If you're stuck with one, it's fine. I just, I can't quite give it the Red, Red Wolf thumbs up you know i hope that uh whoever sent me the thing i'm really bad with names but uh something else you want me to test on it you want to give it another try anything like that let me know i'll be happy you know as always i say hit me up in the comments i'm pretty amenable like that i guess that'll about do it till next time rebel signing off y'all keep up a good fight